here at the Black Iron Shooting Range in Brooklyn, Arkansas. Today we're going to be covering 12 gauge and down to 14 gauge. Uh, it's the smallest shotgun. I don't have a 16 or a 20. Uh, these are the three shotguns that I have primarily for home defense. And we're going to use a couple of different loads here with the 12 gauge to show you recoil and uh, they're actually there is a real good reason behind this. On one side of the little pile here we have regular game loads, or stub loads as most people call them, and then over here we have the express long range. Now the reason, and there's a both two and three quarter, uh, 2900 and something here and 33 I do believe here, or 13 we have here. Well, a lot of people are going to have either one of these rounds ideally for dove hunting or duck hunting. Uh, those are the two main loads that they'd have. You can do light deer hunting and other things with the green shells. They kick a lot more. And here's the reason why. Look at the powder load. Instead of a two and three quarter shell, there's a lot more powder behind that. So it's going to fly a lot farther. It's going to hit a lot harder. It's going to kick a lot worse on the old shoulder. We're going to run our target about to the 10 yard line. Then we're going to slowly advance it. First thing we're going to do is, not that many people buy these for home defense, but SPAS 12. Uh, we're going to put three shells through it Express long range. And here's the here's the thing for a lot of people. Uh, the SPAS-12 is in a lot of video games, a lot of movies. Most people do not know. The feeding ramp actually will not load. Can't get a shell in there until you push the release button. It's also a uh, as a last round lock back like an AR-15 or a pistol and you push that just like the release button on the AR-15 to release it. So you have to adapt your reload technique however you want to do it right or left handed to be able to do this quickly. Let's put three lighter loads in here. Okay. Pump mode. Oh yeah, the way that you switch auto, semi-auto, and pump is like that little button you push down there, and it releases the lock here. That's part of the pump. Drops her down. We're doing it in pump action mode simply because it's a lot more reliable, and uh, you're not going to have to worry about the gun not cycling or anything like that because your muscle power is going to be cycling the gun. So we're going to fire. Try to put as many of those little tombstone shaped deals there as we can out of the picture. And keep in mind this is 10 yards, a mixture of dub loads and express long range shots. Where the dove shots were, which were the first four shells we fired, and where the bigger loads were. So we peppered quite an area. Well, let's uh, take it back out. Let's do the same thing with the Mossberg 500 Persuader Pump. Same load system as before. Ten yard line. Go with double loads first this time. Just do two, two of these. These are going to kick a little bit worse. So you're going to see the shooting style adapt somewhat due to the fact this does not have a stock.
dove loads, we can put them a little closer to our face. Again, we see more peppering. Now keep in mind about, look at the relative height here. If I extend my arms straight out, you make a beeline, this is here and up. We want to keep them, you know, headshots and down. These pellets are going to put soft tissue, eyes, things like that. It's going to rip through a lot of that, but it's not necessarily going to put somebody out because not every one of those pellets is going to find the sweet spot in the eye, go back into the soft tissue there. Let's take her out again. been told this is a little cliche for the south for someone to have the old double barrel 12 gauge but I think it uh, is pretty effective when it's barking at you and for any movie buffs good movie buffs you will recognize what does this look like where does it look like I bought it S smart shop smart shop S smart this is a Remington 12 gauge double barrel I don't think it's got the cobalt blue steel. And I don't think it retails for what he said it did. But it is a Remington Spartan that was actually made in Russia. Right there. I call Gunworks. So it is a Remington gun made in Russia. They do exist. First we're going to shoot dub load. And let's just say this is the hallway. I'm going to pull it up, shoot one barrel at a time. Now this one's just for fun. Let's see. Uh, it's gonna hurt. There we go, right in the light. I'm gonna try to aim dead center. These are the big boys. makes you feel like a man. Yeah, I think we made our point. I guess now we're just going to show you this is going to hurt. Uh, you're going to laugh. It's going to be fun no matter what. I want to show you because this scenario is likely in a home defense situation. Most people don't sit around, you know, chomping at the bit, waiting for an intruder to enter your home. In fact, I don't know anybody that does that unless, you know, your job is to guard somewhere. But, uh, the situation where 
the noise is going to wake you up in the middle of the night and your shotgun is going to be the first thing that you grab, loaded or unloaded, it's pretty high. likelihood you're going to be uh, getting up out of bed real fast to the sound of an intruder and grabbing the shotgun as your first uh, just basic instinct is pretty high. So uh, we'll assume for the moment that you've kept it loaded for just this occasion. Or trap door fun with the Spaz 12. Let's do two shots in each of these. Gun. Let's say that uh, I'm not exactly sure what our scenario could be here. We're uh, we get up, we're in a hurry, we're panicked. We know that someone is uh, uh, invading the home, so to say, and uh, we load our weapon and proceed out into the hallway. Say we got kids or uh, animal leaves their chew toy out, and we slip. So we're gonna fall into like fall into the wall here or fall into the wall here. When we do, we're gonna have already assessed as we walked out of the door, they've got a weapon, they're definitely a threat. They're coming at us with the crowbar, the tire iron, whatever they broke into our house with. And we don't really have time to get a completely stable sight picture, but we'll say we're down a narrow hallway and as we have fallen against the wall, We've got time to just brace ourselves for the impact of it, and that's going to put a hole in a guy. Now, alternatively, we could say that we have completely slipped, and basically, we've fallen all the way to the ground. We're still going to be able to bring our gun up and shoot the guy. There's some one-handed firing with the spaz. Mossberg 5. It's already set up uh, like a big pistol, so it just comes naturally to fire it. So let's say that we so back, I guess the same scenario, maybe we've fallen and we've got to steady ourselves before they're going to get away and we just bring it out and shoot it. That hurt bad enough, I'm not going to do it a second time for you. <laughs> but we're going to just say we've fallen. It's going to go down and boom. That's going to put a big hole in the knee somewhere. Now the reason that I'm doing this is, uh, no, I don't. I'm not telling you to practice one-handed, but just do it every once in a good while, just to know what it feels like with whatever shells you keep around. Because if you've got to shoot more than one time which is possible with a shotgun if they're wearing very heavy uh, winter clothing or something or leather. Uh, leather coats have been known to deflect buckshot uh, down a hallway. So the thought that you're going to have to shoot more than once, that's, that's a possible, uh, possible reality. So with this one, we're going to have to shoot one-handed. It's not going to be pleasant, but it's us or them. And, ooh. It's going to be them, but we're going to fill this one too. So we've fallen against the wall, we've got one hand steady, 
Same scenario, we've fallen against the wall. We've got one hand steady. Dead bad guys.